Pingai OS. This is by multiple requests since really since last year 2011 so you asked for this and you're gonna get it we are going to take a look at Pingai OS 11.10 but before we begin let's take a look at the Pingai OS website alright PingaiOS.com it says here that Pingai OS is an out-of-the-box working operating system for everyone, not just geeks. This OS is for people that have never used Linux before or for people that just want an out-of-the-box working OS without doing all of the tweaks and enhancements that everyone seems to do when installing a fresh copy of Ubuntu or other Linux-based Linux distro. Now keep in mind here that the default links you see here at the bottom is for the previous version which appears to be 11.04.1 11 uh, 11 in either 32-bit or 64-bit versions. Uh, apparently 11.10 uh, Pingai believes that he's going to leave it uh, in perpetual beta uh, even though it is a final because he believes that probably wasn't quite good enough to be called a final release uh, which is fine so keep in mind that this is a final beta and not a final final as it were if that makes any sense so keep in mind that this is a released a final released beta so does this website does this description live up to what Pingai OS is which from what I, I understand from the community is a very popular a complete uh, operating system that should work out of the box. Is that true? Well, we're going to find out. All right, before I begin, let me just uh, say a few things here. I tried this, uh, I tried recording this with five different pieces of screencasting software. None of them worked properly, none of them. The closest I came was the built-in uh, GNOME 3 screencasting recorder that works by, let's see, by hitting Control, Shift, Alt, R. It actually does a pretty good job. It recorded it in the uh, fairly new codec, uh, WebM, I believe. It, it did a stable job, but no sound. And I can't understand, you know, what the developers were thinking. If, thinking if you're coming out with a brand new you know something that's brand new from Linux why would you want to have a built-in recorder that only does half the job but that's just just my opinion as far as that goes so what I will do here is play back what I saw and just do some voice over narration so let's begin alright I tested this in both a desktop a virtual machine and a desktop with Linux Mint 11 as the host and also tested this in my laptop as a dual boot install alongside Windows 7 let me just say quickly say that besides in spite of this being a beta I found both versions or both installs both tests that I did to be stable uh, no hiccups and no crashes um, I was a little bit disappointed in that the uh, both machines were dual core and this uh, this operating system wasn't as zippy as what it should have been. All right, what we are looking now is the uh, shortcuts for the top panel, and you have the standard sound menu, input, microphone, G paste keeps track of your history system monitor workspaces 1 and 2 and the standard clock and date to the right you have a menu sub menu shortcut I believe it's called Cardapio which does resemble uh, a little bit like um, yeah like Windows 7 I found this very easy to use. You can type in anything in the search bar and it'll give you both uh, two types of results. If you type in, say, sound, it'll give you what is installed or what is on your 
a desktop and also give a uh, result at the bottom a web result for sound very easy very friendly no problem there and of course your other shortcuts here uh, again resembles Windows 7 uh, maybe a little bit like the mint menu maybe just a little bit the left panel bar with your uh, folder shortcuts the bottom you have the docky panel or dock for your uh, application software shortcuts again very easy to use and to the right there you have the big big huge system monitor uh, widget I guess if you want to call it that I installed a piece of software called Jupiter power management and uh, I thought this would help with the uh, battery management power management still appears to be an issue with Linux and it is here in uh, in ping iOS uh, I have an extended life battery and I should get upwards uh, or close to four hours battery life uh, I get that in Windows 7 or, I, or close to it. I don't get that in Ping iOS. It's about, uh, I, th I think it maxed out at uh, 2 hours and 40 minutes. So there is still some work to do in power management. Now here what I did, I click the um, super key or the Windows key on the keyboard and it brings up and we go into the GNOME 3 shell. Now I like this because you have a choice of just hitting a standard menu shortcut to the top left as you would in say a, the GNOME 2 Classic uh, maybe a little bit like um, you know Windows 7 and uh, let's see El Ubuntu or Lubuntu, X Ubuntu you have different workspaces here but this resembles a little bit uh, more of what you, you know, first saw in GNOME 3 all of your applications, uh, software by category uh, to the right um, I didn't have any problems navigating through this and you have your uh, category shortcuts you can just click and highlight there again easy of course the standard uh, search bar type in for example music and of course it will give me everything that is related to, to music in Pingai OS Wikipedia and Google shortcuts are at the bottom as an added touch Again, you, the uh, different workspaces by clicking or uh, tapping the super key on your uh, keyboard. Like I said, this was stable. I wish I, I was expecting it to be a little bit more zippy running it in a dual core processor. And the speed dial links uh, add on. This was already in Firefox. I mean, as, as far as. Uh, software a lot of software that is pre-installed it does live up to that billing everything that you could possibly need is installed in ping guy except a working stable screencast recorder and the four different workspaces here closing out the uh, Firefox home folder LibreOffice Shotwell photo manager Pingai wallpaper Of course, you have uh, shortcuts here on the top left for language support and additional drivers. Again, the uh, standard classic menu, if you will. Click Conky, and if you don't like that system monitor to the right, highlight Kill Conky, click OK, and there you go. You have a little bit, a little bit more real estate to work with. The bottom, you have the docky panel, which is also customizable. I believe I clicked uh, advanced settings there we go you could also go into more uh, settings here for uh, GNOME 3 such as fonts color theme windows extensions and I was messing around here just you know clicking things at random just to see what it would do as you can see my uh, cursor mouse cursor is in red
I think what I did here, one of the uh, options changed the look of the uh, panel. And was it that one? Uh, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, it was that one. If you look at the top now, the panel has changed a little bit. More of the classic or the original GNOME 3, I guess. That X shortcut there, that's uh, an extension I downloaded, a force quit extension for GNOME 3, which can, you know, of course can come in handy if a uh, piece of software, if, if, if something freezes or hangs on your desktop. Docky settings. And you can change the icon size. I think I made it bigger. Yeah, there we go. And there you go. Ping Guy OS 11.10 Final Beta Only. And this is where it ends. So, does this live up to the hype? Many of you, many of you were recommending for me to try this. So let me say this in the end. I was impressed by the stability of the beta, both my desktop and laptop. Uh, very easy to navigate to. If you're not used to this GNOME 3, I can see where this might be a problem. As much as I liked Ping iOS, I was very disappointed in a couple of things. But let me just do a quick uh, score here, and, th and then you guys can tell me later what you think. So. Stability, bugs, software, navigation. And let's give, say, oh, total score of 100. Out of a total score of 100, maybe uh, assign a total of 20 points per aspect of the operating system. So let's start with stability. Yeah, it was stable, both on my desktop and my laptop. Of course, I was just running this for about a day or two. Uh, I did not have time to test every piece of software, but let me just say it was stable, so I would probably give uh, the, the stability score 20 points. Bugs. This is where it was the real killer. Couldn't get any piece of screen uh, screencasting software to work. Uh, the power management is still an issue. Uh, kind of disappointing more in the power manager. Uh, you would think uh, it things would have been worked out by now but uh, man you know having uh, not having the amount of battery life you think you have in any um, in any operating system is kind of disappointing so I'd have to really at this point I'd have to give a score of zero there very disappointing again not to mention not having any uh, really solid screencasting software working software yep it does live up to its billing is having any possible piece of software that you could use to at least to get started. So I would give 20 points there. Navigation. Well, it's not Unity. It's not GNOME 2 Classic. Uh, some of you don't like it. I, I, th I thought it was fine. So I would give this a score of 20. Uh, as far as user-friendly, uh, I mean, not being able to right-click on the panel, you know, to add applets. Uh, Linux developers could probably take a cue from, you know, Windows 7. You know, when you, know, when you right-click on your desktop and you have a lot more options than just these. Uh, that's what GNOME 3 needs. Uh, you know, something where you right-click and it does more than just this standard menu, sub-menu. So that I would probably give a score of 10. So if we got 20 for stability, 20 for software, 20 for navigation, and then 10 for user-friendly, that's 70 points. The only failure here really is in the bugs. It's kind of kind of disappointing. Um, I still have this installed on my laptop. I haven't deleted it yet. I probably will because I just downloaded, finished downloading Zubuntu. 11.10 and I'm curious to see how that works in a dual core machine uh, but as far as you know Pingai now I don't know about the previous versions of Pingai if they work any, any better let me know but as far as Pingai 11.10 not to be fair this is a final beta release uh, but as far as this one goes it was somewhat disappointing 
but I think Ping Guy and really Gnome 3 does show some promise for the, for the future. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will catch you guys sometime in the future.